Ellen Miller, teacher and author, and I'm going to talk about circular flounces. First, let me explain the difference between a flounce and a ruffle. If you see here, this is a ruffle. It has a gathered edge where it attaches to the fabric, and this is the frill. This is a flounce, and it has a flat edge where it is attached to the ruffle, and this is the frill. They look different, and it's just whichever one you like better. To start making your flounce, you're going to draw a big circle. Here's my center point. You can use a pin and a ribbon or a piece of string and tie it to a pen and then do, the, do it this way. But you have to keep the pen absolutely upright, straight, or it doesn't work. I prefer to use a ruler. This ruler has holes in the center. So I can pin right through the ruler, take my pen, and draw my circle. Just turning my ruler and keeping the pen the same place. Going around, all the way around. Now I'm going to draw a smaller inner circle, so I'm going to change the pivot point place on the ruler. And this circle had a seven inch diameter. This one is going to have a two inch diameter. And again, I'm just gonna turn the ruler, keeping my pen in the same position on my ruler. And there I have my two circles. So here's another version of my two circles, this time done in a striped cloth so I can see the straight of grain which is printed in these stripes. I've cut out the outer edge of my circle which is going to be my hem. And then I'm going to cut on the straight of grain to my inner circle and cut away my inner circle. Then I'm going to stay stitch my circle in order to create my flounces. But first I wanna talk about the flounces. In this circle, you have a straight of grain here and here, and a cross grain here and here. The bias is here and here, and here and here. This is important because when you lay your ruffle flat, as you can see here, the straight grain lays flat against the table, and here it's also flat against the table. The horizontal grain, which is here and here, or the cross grain, is also flat against the table while the bias makes this lovely frill. This is exactly how it's going to lay on the body. If I want to change my frill, I can clip to my stay stitching and you can see that I get different amounts of frill here just from clipping. Another way to change my frill is to change the size of my inner circles. Here I have three circles, all cut from the same fabric and all with this seven inch radius. And upside down. Here's the first circle, which is the same size as this one. And here's the frill on that. If I cut a slightly bigger inner circle, you can see that the seam line is longer, but the depth of the flounce is less, and the frill is a little different. This circle, which has an even bigger inner circle, has an even longer seam line, a shorter depth, and less frill. If I were to use this ruffle, I might need to sew several circles together in order to get a long enough seam line. I'm going to go back to my striped fabric. And if you always cut through your circle here on the straight of grain, when you sew the circles together, the seaming is easy. It's on the straight of grain. Also, 
when you lay out your frills, your flounces, sorry, the frill sequence will be the same because your grain lines are the same. Now let's talk about sewing the flounces. I, the first thing to do is to hem the flounce. That's a little out of order, I know, but I find that hemming a flounce before you attach it to a garment is easier. It's just less fabric to manipulate. Actually, hemming a flounce can be a little tricky because you are going from straight grain to bias to cross grain to bias and so on. So I prefer to line them. Here, I've lined my flounce with the same fabric and I've just stitched it right around. Once you've stitched it, you can clip it or you can trim away the seam allowance to 3 16 of an inch as I've done here. Now I'm going to go to the ironing board and press this. Press this as you sewed it to embed the stitches. Then turn it inside out so it's right sides together. And it looks like an impossible mess, but with a little heat and steam, it's going to be beautiful. You're going to press right over the seam with the tip of the iron, pressing the seam allowance into one of these, into the other circle. You can see this little portion that I've done here. When you're done, it's going to look like this almost like an inflated pita bread. Then you're going to press this flat and you can roll this seam to the wrong, si to the wrong side slightly or you can just press it right on the seam line, whatever you prefer. Here's one that's already pressed and I've understitched this on the wrong side to keep my seam allowances from going to the right side. Then stitch your inner circles together. Now we're ready to sew this to fabric. I'm going to go to the machine and sew this to the fabric. I find I need to use lots of pins to keep this where I want it. But always remember, don't sew over the pins. So I'm going to pin this together. Matching my seam allowances very carefully. And I want to sew this one layer at a time. So the flounce and my base fabric. Now I'm going to stitch all the way from the edge of this fabric straight across. Okay, and now I'm looking carefully at my flounce to make sure that as I stitch, I'm not getting any little puckers in the flounce. You can see right here, it really wants to make a pucker and I don't want that. So I'm going to just keep going. Moving the flounce fabric as I need to and removing my pins. Here's another little pucker that wants to come up and I'm just going to tell the flounce that I'm the boss. Okay. And there's my flounce sewn in. 
Now I'm going to take my other piece of fabric. So this is what it would look like if I just wanted to hang it off my hem. If I want to sandwich this between two pieces of fabric, I'm going to take my, uh, my second fabric, lay this on top, pin it in place, So there I have it pinned, and when I'm ready to sew, I'm going to turn it to the wrong side here, what feels like the wrong side. I'm going to take it to the side where I've already sewn, and I'm going to stitch right on top of this seam line. Bring this one over, and you can see here, I have two rows of stitching right here from the two rows of stitching to stitch in the flounce. Open it up, and there's my flounce, beautifully sewn in. Flounce can go horizontally or vertically on the body. Both ways are beautiful. And here's an example of a flounce in a sleeve that I made for my book. <laughs>